All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, I really wanted to show you guys this plot of fig trees that I have on the north side of my property. I'm growing here in the Philadelphia area and I carefully have selected this part of my property to plant fig trees in as a hardiness experiment. I figured this plot here would have the best chance of getting my fig trees to survive. Even though I am in a zone 7A and you can see great success growing fig trees of hardier varieties in the ground here, I figured this plot, because it has such a well-draining soil, because the soil really doesn't stay wet for very long, this would be the perfect place to plant them. And the reason for that is because they lignified just so darn well. If a fig is gonna grow throughout the season, all winter time, or all, excuse me, all summer time, and even into the fall, and really not stop growing and get hit by that first frost, you're gonna have a much harder time and you're gonna see a lot more damage on your fig tree in the winter. So one of the things I had noticed is that this plot used to have a big shade tree planted here and it got hit by lightning twice. So we took it out and maybe you could say it was a bit of a cursed tree. Um, and so instead, when I started thinking about what I was gonna plant here, I realized that the soil was very different, very different composition than anywhere else in the yard and that it was more of a sandy loam rather than the heavy clay that we have here pretty much everywhere else. I don't know if the tree did that over time. I don't know if it's maybe because of some development that happened when we built the house here. It doesn't matter. What I found is that it's really hard to keep the soil here moist. And again, because of that, the trees basically in the summer will stop growing. And then when they stop growing, they lignify in time in preparation for the winter. And now, as an example, this Campanieri tree here has survived the winter now for three seasons. This is its third season since basically it's been doing its thing. And it's actually now in its third year, it's gonna produce roughly around 250, probably 300 figs. The fruits are also way ahead, I would argue, than most of the other varieties in the property by probably a few days. So maybe I'll end up getting this tree here to fruit roughly a week ahead of some of the other trees. Maybe I'll get fruits off of this by the end of July. Wouldn't that be great? And what's also really nice about this dry soil here is actually it helps the quality of the fruits improve significantly. Last year I did a tasting with some friends, they invited some people over, people who actually are really into figs, people who have no idea about figs, and we all gave uh, a rating and basically said what was our favorite fig that day. We had 20 plus different varieties. My favorite fig of the day was actually the Campanieri. And normally I wouldn't say that, uh, but coming out of this plot here, it was incredibly well ripened, um, and also because of this dry soil, the quality was higher. And I even picked up what I would describe as an earthy flavor. And there was like a minerality to this fig that brought this fig to a whole nother level that I'm not even used to. Right next to it was another favorite fig by my friend Romeo. That's a fig called Sicilian Dark, which is a hardy Chicago fig. His favorite fig that day was a hardy Chicago um, or at least one of his favorites that day. I think actually it was somebody else, not Romeo, but somebody else had said that was their favorite, which is amazing because normally, and what we know about that variety is it's not really the tastiest fig because I have it planted here in this drier soil, it brings that flavor to a whole nother level. That excess water basically, whatever the fig tree doesn't need is stored in the fruits the fig is in a way kind of like a cactus. And so it stores the water in the branches, the trunks, the leaves, and then of course, even in the fruits. So you don't want to give the fig any more water than it needs to be happy and healthy. And this plot just does a fantastic job of getting my figs basically through the winter, getting a higher fruit quality. And so this is kind of a video on, you know, just talking about your microclimates and figuring out where things should be planted and shouldn't be planted. This is out in the open and I'd rather have them against the house. There is some blacktop here and concrete from the, the driveway that we have, the parking lot that we have. Uh, so there is some of that thermal dynamic heating. 
But as an example, just we'll end with this, is that this Campanere, although it's survived here for three seasons, there's another one right there right next to it that's just now finally surviving. This is its first winter that it made it through and hopefully will eventually form a structure maybe similar to this. The trees are very close together and so maybe that's not a good idea. But the other three Campanieri trees I have in the property on the west side of the house, actually they're not doing well um, in terms of their hardiness. One, I managed to bend it over, cover it with wood chips this year, so I protected it and it got through the winter and it's gonna fruit and it's gonna form a nice structure there. But if you can't get them through the winter time in that first season I've learned, you're not really going to have great results. And you may even think that a variety like Campanieri that's supposed to be very hardy is actually not, when indeed it is. Just you have to find the right location for it, plant it in the right spot, the right microclimate, the right soil, and that just makes the world different. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button for me. Hit that like button for me. Check out the blog, figboss.com. See you guys for the next one. Take care.